was we pray father we thank you for this wonderful morning and we thank you for your mighty grace and power we thank you because you are a wonderful savior and i is not like unto you you are the mighty man of war glorious in holiness fearful in praises and doing wonders the el shaddai the great i am the one who is more than sufficient the one who is greater than the greatest and higher than the highest accept our thanks in jesus name this morning open our understanding make us victor in the battle of life thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we pray a louder amen. amen. Let's have a say, God bless you. The anointed mind. The anointed mind. The anointed mind. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. As one of the most powerful verses in scripture, which is as relevant as relevance can be. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says this. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Another translation of the Bible says, above all things, keep your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. The Bible now says in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, a very damning verse. Very, very straightforward and highly focused. Romans 8 6. It says this For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Is there anybody here this morning who wants life and peace? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. That is a condition. You must be spiritually minded. If you want life and peace. But if you are carnally minded, the Bible says the result is death. No wonder Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all things, keep your heart with all diligence. So for out of that heart, are the issues of life where you are sitting now you alone know what you are thinking i don't know what you are thinking the person sitting next to you does not know what you are thinking but you know what you are thinking i want you to think for a minute about what you are thinking what do you normally think about what do you usually think about what occupies your daily thoughts most i asked this question this morning because the Bible says there is a direct relationship between what you are thinking and the kind of person you are going to be tomorrow. Are your thoughts good or bad? Are your thoughts negative or positive? Are your thoughts godly or ungodly? Whatever they are, you become what that, those thoughts are. It's an amazing fact, but it is true. Because you are what you think. What you are today was what you thought yesterday. So thoughts can be a blessing. They can also be a curse. Depending on the content of that thought. You and you alone can determine the content of that thought. So technically and scripturally speaking. Your mind is either your best friend or your worst enemy. Depending on how you use it. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is sin that has produced the carnal mind that people have now. 
man was created in the garden with an innocent mind with no thoughts of evil at all satan tempted man he wanted man to think that god was lying to him man was duped by satan it was then the carnal mind took over and it followed that then god now saw that the wickedness of man was great on earth and decided to sweep them away with the flood sometimes when you begin to read the new testament especially the gospels you hear jesus said think not that i have come to do this think not that this is what i mean say so think not that this is what i'm referring to jesus used to say think not that so jesus taught us how to think he also taught us how not to think wrong thinking matters and right thinking matters wrong thinking has to be removed in order for the right thinking to take over therefore beloved if you want to change your surroundings want to change your life start inside start inside a mother screamed at her child sit down say mom i'm not going to sit down mommy said if you don't sit down i will smack you hey, mommy i will not sit down then the mommy went and brought a cane and the boy sat down mommy now said huh eh? why did you sit down now when I, why didn't you remain standing? You have seen what this can will do to you today. But I say, Mommy, I'm sitting down here, but I'm standing up on the inside. If you want to change your surroundings, you want to change your life, it starts from the inside. When you make the right changes to your thinking, other things begin to turn out right in your life. When you change the thinking of a man, you change his focus and when you're able to change that focus you change his destiny so but change thinking is not automatic change thinking i accept it's difficult especially if a person has been used to thinking evil thinking evil thinking bad thinking the worst how can somebody be standing at the bus stop and said oh, and and to think that a bus will just run over my leg here now and he's the one standing there that kind of thinking has been going on for years and when a kind of thought pattern has been going on has been going on for years then it becomes what the bible calls a strong hole that's why there is no accidental fornication there is no accidental adultery it's not possible it has been in your thoughts you've been meditating upon it it's been there all this while many years back i was invited to a campus fellowship as a minister I got inside that hall. It was charged. Powerful praise worship. Serious environment. You could feel the place moving with fire. I was the speaker. So they gave me the microphone. As I took the microphone, and as I closed your eyes and let us pray, all of a sudden there was a prophecy at the back. Say, my God, blah, blah, blah. Hear the word of the Lord. Everybody gathered here. There is somebody here now who has just finished sleeping with a woman and his fornication if you don't come out for my son who is the speaker of today to pray for you you will die in seven days ah the whole place went dead those who were playing the music could not play music again if you drop a pin you could hear i too could not pray my opening prayer say ah in this place so i stood there all of a sudden, after a few minutes, I saw one handsome brother, lighting complexion, crawling to the altar. I said he was crawling there, moving sluggishly. And he got to me at the front. I said, are you the one? He said, yes. He was in tears. I said, when did this happen? He looked at his wristwatch. He said, this is 6 p.m. He said, about one hour he goes out. I said, okay. I wanted to say, kneel down and let me pray for you. Then he opened his mouth and said, Sir, I was forced. Ha, you were forced. I said, ah, Excuse me. You are a man. Are you saying you were raped? I said, I know this is university, but this is the first time I will see a man being raped. He said, No, sir. Those things have been in his thinking processes. That's what the Bible says. 
You don't have to drag a woman to bed before you commit adultery. Immediately you extract the woman in your mind, you extract the man in your mind. The Bible says you are already guilty. That's what the Bible says. So the interest of scripture is your thinking. Change thinking is difficult, but it is achievable and is possible through the power in the blood of Jesus. The devil is after our minds like no man's business because he knows that out of it are the issues of life. And if there is one pass mark you want to give to the devil, one pass mark that the devil has is that he is extremely good at making evil suggestions. Evil suggestions into the heart of the person. This is a serious matter. Nobody will go to hellfire by mistake. Neither can you go to heaven by accident. Your heart. First, what's going on? Our enemy works best by suggesting doubts, questions, terrible things into our hearts. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what brings death? What brings life? Is our mind. Evil thoughts negative thoughts come from what we allow in our mind wrong thinking will bring wrong action right thinking will bring right action this is a serious matter some people come sometimes and say pastor i don't know why i'm always thinking evil i'm always thinking evil i'm always thinking evil i'm always thinking evil pastor what is wrong with me i normally answer i said the reason you are thinking evil is because you are evil. That's a simple answer. In First Peter chapter one, First Peter chapter one, verse thirteen. First Peter one thirteen. First Peter chapter one, verse thirteen. The devil is after our minds, and he has been able to bend so many people's mind. He's been able to bend their minds. In First Peter one thirteen, so wherefore guide up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wherefore guide up the loins of your mind, the loins of your mind. The loins is the reproductive organ, the reproductive area. That loins is the reproductive area of the human body. So that's the reproductive area of the human body. So our mind is the reproductive area of our spirit. I must be guided with the word of God and the Holy Ghost. Sin is a result of bad thoughts. Your thought life, beloved, is the beginning of victory in your life. It is also the beginning of defeat depending on what you are thinking your thoughts when they're so bad and they've been going on for many many years it becomes a stronghold this is a serious matter it's like the south african proverb that if you pass behind a murderer with a knife you would think it's a cutlass because his mind his mind is used to using cutlass to kill like I was saying the other time, those who never enter the promised land, they had mind problems. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Those who could not enter. So all this trouble is in the minds. But those like Joshua and Caleb who saw themselves in the promised land, in their mind, they got there. Joseph called his brethren. said, I'm about to die. I know that the Lord will take you away from here to the land you are going you will get out of this egypt and you get to your promised land say but when you are departing from egypt take my bones along with you don't allow my bones to stay in egypt and as israelites stood up from egypt and they were going away they had this little coffin they were carrying containing the bones of joseph the bones of joseph got to the promised land but those who carried the bones died in the wilderness because he could see when you have the mind of victory you become victorious when you have the mind of power you become powerful when you have the mind of victory you become a victorious person 
read the book of Psalm very well. David made music out of everything he experienced. He saw every adversity as something that has an alternative. This is a serious matter. And I want us to understand what we're trying to say here. David had a winning mentality. Winning mentality. There is nowhere in the Bible where the Bible says light should be running away when it sees darkness. That's why when David got to the war front, and he said, Goliath, and he said, you, you have come to defy the armies of the living God. He said, today, I will cut off your head, and I will feed to the birds. And the Philistines laughed. But the first thing that David did, shocked the Philistines to his bones. The Bible says, David ran towards Goliath. Goliath was not used to people running to him. He was used to people running away. But that was another man running out towards him. A small boy. I pray that you will run towards your Goliath. You will run towards your Goliath. And your Goliath shall be disgraced. Jeremiah 17.9 now says this. Jeremiah 17.9. Jeremiah 17.9. Many of us need to lay our hands on our chest and pray desperate prayer on what is coming out of our minds jeremiah 79 a very damning description of the heart of man said the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 i the lord search the heart I tried the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the foot of his doings. The heart is deep, desperately wicked, deceitful. A man of God who believes in the message of hellfire and brimstone. And that's what he preaches about mostly. He was in this congregation that day and he was preaching about hellfire, preaching about brimstone, preaching about destruction of the wicked. Oh, there was a lady at the front row. At a stage in the sermon, the lady broke down and started crying. And the man began to re-emphasize the hellfire. And the lady cried the more. And the sermon ended. And the man said, Lady, come forward so I can pray for you. She still came forward and was crying bitterly. And the man said, Stop crying, stop crying. Let us pray. Whatever you have done, God is able to forgive you. He said, Man of God, you should have asked me why I'm crying. I said, Why are you crying then? Say, looking at you there, I said, Oh no, what a handsome man. I wish this one is my husband. The preacher almost collapsed. So, the Bible says the art of man is desperately wicked, deep and deceitful above all things. Who would have thought that somebody crying during the message of hellfire is thinking about something else entirely? I want you to take this issue very seriously. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Above all things, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. You may not be able to stop birds from flying all over your head. But you can keep the bird from building a nest on your head. All you need to do is to give the thing a blow off your head. You may not be able to stop the devil bringing evil suggestions to you. But you can kick them out. As they come to kick them out. You replace them with the thoughts of God. A new mind creates a new life righteousness in your mind brings out beauty in your character when you are intellectually educated you have an intellectual culture but with a bad heart you are a civilized barbarian so to change your character and to change your life you must begin at the control center which is your heart this is a serious matter the heart is deep. The heart is wicked. The heart is deceitful. The heart can fail us. The heart can be proud. The heart can be like wax. The heart can be at war within itself. The heart can be imagining mischief. The heart can be perverse. The heart can be sick without hope. The heart can be rebellious. The heart can be divided. The heart can be secretly enticed. These are descriptions from the Bible. 
I have no time to be giving you the verses because of our child. The heart can be hard and adamant. The heart can be mad. There are plenty of mad hearts around. In fact, to be quite honest with you, plenty of the so-called decent people in Nigeria are decently mad. The heart can be lustful. The heart can be slow. The heart can be blind. The heart can be wounded. The heart can backslide. The heart can be hypocritical. The heart can be fat and greasy. The heart can be desolate. The heart can be despising. The heart can be bitter. The heart can be foolish. The heart can be prone to error. The heart can be abominable. To see the kind of person people are thinking is abominable. The heart can be impenitent. The heart can be double. The heart can be defiled. The heart can be arrogant. The heart can be stony. The heart can be strange. Strange heart. There was a day here. They played a tape here. Gio was in Congo. They played a tape here on dancers at the gate of death. After the service, a man who came with his daughter to church. Daughter was now asking daddy. Daddy, did you hear what they played today? Should we still continue what we're doing? What do we do now? Strange heart. Daddy sleeping with daughter. The heart can be troubled. The heart can be darkened. It grieves God when our heart is so dark and is pushing us away from him. That heart too is the place of encounter with God. I asked this morning, what then is the condition of your heart? What kind of thoughts do you allow? Have you succeeded in blocking evil thoughts out of your heart? It is when terrible things are crossing through the heart, crossing through the heart. Then one day, the person develops a spiritual heart attack. And most of the people who have had a heart attack, what happens is that the blood vessels in the heart, they'll be hardening. They'll be hardening. When your heart becomes hardened, then spiritual heart attack is on the way. And this is why you need to understand this morning that we need to do something quick. The kind of heart that God wants is the anointed man. The anointed man. I pray that there will be somebody here today who will cry to the heavens loud and clear. A father, anoint my heart. The psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. What is an anointed mind? An anointed mind is a mind whose meditation is acceptable to God. All those things you are thinking in that heart is acceptable to God. That's the anointed mind. The anointed mind is the mind that has concentrated on Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. The anointed mind is a mind that is concentrated on Philippians 4 8. What is in Philippians 4 8? I think you should open your Bible to that place. The anointed mind number one is one whose thoughts, the meditation of that heart is acceptable to God. Number two, the anointed heart is one whose heart is following Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8 says this Finally, Brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So the anointed mind is a mind that oh, everything you are thinking about is what is there. Anything that is not here, you are not thinking about it. Number one, you are thinking about what is true. Number two, you are thinking about what is honest. Number three, you are thinking about what is just. Number four, you are thinking about what is pure. Number five, you are thinking about what is lovely. Number six, you are thinking about what is of good report. Number seven, you are thinking about what is, what, what is, of, what is virtuous in outlook. And number eight, you are thinking about things that can praise, that can glorify God. 
your thoughts should be centered on those eight things anything outside that one it is a dirty mind it's an ugly mind it's an unanointed mind it's the mind focused for hellfire doesn't matter what name you call yourself doesn't matter what you are but if this is not your thought then you are off the mind is not anointed number three an anointed mind is a mind that is humble but it's humble when you overprice yourself, you overrate yourself. It's pride. Pride of class. Pride of university. Pride of degree. Pride of this, pride of that. And yet then you overrate yourself. A man took his son for jam exam. And they came two minutes late. Because of traffic. And this man was begging the lecturer at the door. Please let my son in. Well, it's traffic. We left home very early. Please let my son in man was saying but the, the lateness is still within legally accepted limits let my son in the lecturer said what do you mean by law what law do you know what law do you know i have a master's in law and he was talking and the man, the man was watching him after i talked talk 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 and the man said have you read social book say yes that's a book i read for my masters the man said i wrote it say how are you so 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 say sorry sir sorry sir your son can enter. When you overrate yourself, you are crying for a fall. Crying really, really for a fall. That is the thing. Number four. An anointed mind is a mind that is not conformed to this world. That is a mind that is renewed and renovated. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Don't conform, but be transformed by the renew of your mind. When your mind is conformed with the world, then it's not anointed. But when your mind is not conformed to this world, that is an anointed mind. You are not interested in what they are interested in. You are not running after what they are running after. You are not interested in what they are doing because your mind is focused on them. I was listening to a fashion woman speak on television. She said the age of dressing for just dressing is gone. The most dresses that have been designed now are designed for sexual appeal. So if that is what you are to you, you are running after. And you say, hey, if I don't dress like that, they say I'm dull. It's better to be dull and make heaven than to be exciting and go to hellfire. An anointed mind is a mind that is always positive. Positive. An anointed mind is a mind that is set on things above. Some people never give a thought to heaven at all. That if there is even plenty of churches where nobody talks about heaven for two years. An anointed mind is a disciplined mind that is always continually being renewed. Would there be somebody here this morning who will say, change my heart, O Lord. Anoint my mind. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O God. Remember, life and death, the issues that come from the mind. Above all things, Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If all you are thinking about I want to buy shoes, I want to buy clothes, I want to buy car, I want to build house, I want to do this, I want to do this. You are looking for Jesus the bread maker. Is Jesus bread maker you are looking for? You are not looking for Jesus who gives salvation. Well, that's what he says to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things shall be an addition. But right now people are seeking for the addition and they drop the kingdom. They forget the words of the psalmist. He says, I have been young. Now I am old. I have not yet seen the righteous being forsaken or his children begging bread. You be righteous first and see whether you will not be rich. You purify your mind. You do what God wants you to do. You seek that kingdom first. Get it in your hand and see whether money will be a problem for you. But we're busy running after the side, 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 side things. God will help us this morning. Rise up on your feet, beloved. Lay your hands on your chest. Lay your hands on your chest. Stand up, everybody. But if you are here this morning, and you are not born again. You have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. 
I want to give you an opportunity. Whatever you are, just raise up your right hand. I want to pray with you now. Those of you raising up your right hand. So what I'm going to say now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that short prayer with me, also if you're a backslider, join them. Immediately we close now. Don't run home. Just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. Those of you who raise up your right hand. Don't allow the devil to push you to go home. Lay your hand on your chest now. We have only one prayer to pray. Only one is like this prayer of the psalmist. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord. The way you are going to pray the praises. If you like yourself, if you like your destiny, cry to the heavenly now. of the state of your heart it will be a tragedy if your heart pushes you to hellfire Jesus name we pray uh, you don't understand this prayer you just prayed is greater than let's say uh, witchcraft fall down and die let it know. <laughs> if you get victory in your mind you won all wars beloved the greatest battlefield is battlefield of the mind understand this very seriously that's what the Bible says though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity all thoughts to the obedience of Christ. All those thoughts that, are, that is occupying your mind, bad, bad thoughts, evil, evil thoughts, fornication, adultery, masturbation, all those terrible thoughts. They have become a stronghold. And what do we do to stronghold in the Bible? We pull them down. Can you shout this with boiling anger? Strongholds in my heart! I pull you down! In the name of Jesus! Pull down the strongholds! Jesus name we pray one more prayer before we go as a priest team sing
one more prayer that we go home. The devil came to tempt Jesus, but he failed. Jesus said, the prince of this world come unto me. He found nothing in my life. For the enemy to come against you and to succeed, there must be a ladder. It is that ladder we want to pray against now. Let me hear your voices roaring like thunder like this. Ladders of darkness! In my life! In the name of Jesus! Deal with the ladder of darkness! Yes! Every ladder through which the enemy is climbing to my life. The potasakatandaka, ribo bokapala ka aboshanta, the ribo sopande ke aboshanta. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for today. As the children go into this month, let there be favor. Let there be breakthroughs. Let there be blessing. Let every conspiracy of the enemy be disgraced. Let every enemy hiding in this dark to torment your children be exposed and disgraced. Let evil voices speaking against your children be silenced forever. It is written, all those that want to eat your flesh, I will feed them with their flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood. Any power assigned to drink your blood or eat your flesh or those of any member of your family, they shall eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall drink their own blood. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall drink their own blood. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall drink their own blood. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall drink their own blood. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.